Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. It's your boy Jesse Keegan. And your girl Fanny Lungo. And we are Fanny, Fanny and Jesse. Jesse. So right about now we're gonna do another reaction video. Before we get to the reaction, guys, I wanna say thank you so much. Actually, yes, I'm dressing like this because I'm just from work. And she just hijacked me. She just told me, no, 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 you have to do a reaction first before you change. So that was not bad. Anyway, without any further ado, guys, today we're gonna do another reaction video. And this one right here is I I'm gay and still love Allah. So, without any further ado, let's get it. We want to establish an amazing masjid for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the country of Norway. Click on the link and donate now for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing? Okay, I'm Yala Messi, inshallah. It's a pleasure to have you here. Um, yeah, uh, alhamdulillah, I like, I like your uh, fashion sense. <laughs> and it's a work on mine. So, yeah, so what I was going to say is. Okay, so. Okay, so. Tell us a bit about yourself. Tell us a bit about we yourself. Want to know about, so about we want to know about, about okay. yourself. So, okay. I think, so I think because we're talking because about, we're talking one, about specific one specific thing, I'm going to concentrate on that. that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say I was born in Italy. Okay. I was raised then. I was raised with, you know, let's say I was, I am like the typical, you know, the people you would see everywhere now, like being indoctrinated by media, being indoctrinated by ideal ideologies, really, which are constructed on fallacies really nowadays yes, yes. and what I really always, what I really found, always found a problem was that most arguments, most arguments around literally, yeah. around in literally life, everything yeah. in life always yeah. had always had emotional, emotional argument like it was always, like, always emotional motive there was never logic or fact and, yeah. if, we and take if we take in literally facts don't really, facts, care, about don't really care about your emotions, emotions do they yeah. Yeah. so I think that's what I really stuck with that that just got stuck with me and I started to like the moment the moment I tried to separate my own emotions Nowadays, which people like, nowadays used like used to like justify everything they want to do, everything they want to do, whether objectively, yes, right, objectively or right or not, like, whether, like, do it or not. whether do it or not. I think, I think the moment I separated the, moment I separated the emotion side, the emotion with, side the facts, yes. with the facts, I think, yes. that's, when I I think that's when I started to like have, to, like, a, plain have a plain base where I could construct what reality really what is in the really dunya. Is in the dunya. So, so uh, from there, from I there, started, you I just started, you know, I started to research. Also, it's very, also, difficult, it's very to difficult to kind of understand Islam, Islam when you're in Italy, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very yeah. because nobody's like, Muslim nobody there. Is. Like nobody so is. So I was fortunate so because, of course, I was, because, course, I was born in a Muslim family. But of course, they never, but of course, had, they never had the logical or the vocal, the vocal ability to kind of portray the message logically. It's more like to someone who is. What does this mean? What does this mean? So someone who is like, like growing like up between like in a contrast between, between what's a social, a social norm, norm in their own, yeah. world, in their like, own world, like in their own country and what reality, and what reality is on the other hand which is of course Islam for me yeah. because that's the only place, because that's the only place, place, where, I place where I found some so sense you know did you, so did you, you is there a point that you left Islam or, or was there a point where you was like I think I'm not sure I think I was like in it like in it like when I was in Italy I never really felt as if I was a Muslim or whatever so it's not like I ever left Islam I feel like I've never associated with it whatsoever I never understood it because the only thing I I, went, I only like, went far, only went until, far like, until like reading the Quran and that was it. Okay. Okay. I found out I found out that my sexual inclinations, sexual inclinations okay. you could say. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, so heteronormative, heteronormative like, you could say. Like they were not. Okay. Okay. I was not straight. Okay. 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 Like technically speaking. I don't, I don't believe, I don't, in, I don't believe in defining yourself with these words in the sense that they constitute your identity more than the word Muslim does really. Okay. And that's where. So of course it's a struggle for many people because there's many people who identify as. It's not even identifying. They just feel that way. So okay. Like so it's more like an instinct than rather than a feeling. Because, mm. because what the word is, what the like, word is you know, like, you know, the word gay, gay is not defining you as a person. It's just describing your biological, describing your biological approaches to some situations in some circumstances. Okay. And, okay. My main and my was, main problem was, you know, was you know, every time I would research, the, I would the, question research the question whether you can be gay or Muslim or online, or Muslim yeah. online. The, the answer was always that. The answer was always the answer was always focused on sex. So the answer the answer was always focused on sex in the sense that people were always people were always worried about whether you can act upon it or not. Mm. 
but I never found but that I never to be, found the, that to the, be biggest the, the biggest issue there because, because, issue my, there because my main the problem was since the beginning like was to like understand what reality is. You know, okay. like, like, you know, like, like you mean with the creator? Okay, exactly. That okay, that was my main. Do you want me to put your bag down, please? Tell him put it down, please. Yeah. So, do you mind giving me your name or like? I'm Hussein. Hussein. Okay, Hussein. I'm Ali. Okay. So, so the thing is here, it's very important because the thing is when anybody has an inclination, we all have inclinations in different ways. And it's a way of dealing now, with it. Obviously, now, as obviously, as a person who had these inclinations where you felt maybe, where you the, felt attraction maybe the attraction to the opposite gender, gender or whatever it may be, there, there, are, people there are people who go from yeah. different yeah. routes. Yeah. So the first one could be, Allah made me like this. It's Allah's fault. You didn't go down that route. Number one, which I found very interesting. And I found very admiring that you didn't go down that route. Because a lot of people, not even just with the um, with, your with your sexuality. Some people do this with. They want to party. So they're like, I want to party. So, like, so, like, party. so what they do is they feel a bit guilty doing these sins. So they're like, okay, they're like, okay if I make myself, I make myself that believe that God doesn't exist, I'll justify it to myself. myself. You didn't go down that route. You went down, route. You you went down the route I where. I mean, I did initially. You did initially? When I was like 11. Exactly. So, but later on, you made yourself acknowledge that yes, I may have these inclinations, but you didn't leave it now. Like you said, no. I, yes, I don't know, I, I don't know. what happened next when you felt this stuff for Islam? So I did leave the idea of Islam, I did leave the concept of Islam. I left it when I came to the Aya, you know, Lut al I never had any context that's about it. All oh, that's all I read because media was portraying Islam, Islam that way, you know, Islam does this to these people and this to these people. But you know, if you get to the root of it, you discover that Islam doesn't do anything to these people as long as you're not doing it, you know, publicly, stuff like that, which is really unlikely that you would do that. Exactly. In today's time, exactly. yeah. even that, that goes people with like who people who are straight. Are you know, if you're not going to go into intimacy in public, and if you do, you know, there will be, punishment. be a punishment. It's not like one or the other. Yeah. other. Yeah. You get it? Like yeah. the concept of zina is zina. What's done in public? What happens in the house is totally separate because you're not having an impact on society. So from there onwards, when you realize this realization, it's very um, strong of you to acknowledge that it's a sin. So you accept it. It's like it is a sin. So how did you do it? Because there are people who may have. I think, of course, of course, he was a problem for me as well in the sense that I had to be introduced to this issue the same way everybody else had to so like for someone who has exclusively these inclinations you know it might be a bit hard because you have to what you have to accept is that there's no kind of outlet for you to have you, you cannot it's fine you know it's, and I, I understand it's very difficult for some people and therefore I can see why people take it to a realm where, where they have to like they take it to a position in which they just justify it they say how can Allah ever like you know, deny it Pleasures these pleasures to, to, a to a human being who biologically has them. But you know, I feel like, you know, I feel like, I feel like, at the, I feel same, like time at the like same time, it's this like, desire this desire is not, <coughs> I feel like, everybody I feel like everybody's, everybody's given a different challenge in this yeah. dunya, really. Do you yeah. get what I mean? So if, you you mean? So if you believe in Allah to begin with, to begin you understand, with, you understand when that you're when you're reading those words where Allah is denying this to you, when He's saying that you cannot do it, I think you need to have the perspective in which you believe Allah is real, therefore He knows what's right and what isn't, and therefore you have to like take the approach in which you simply have to accept it. But obviously, this is, can I hug you? Please, you know why? Please, you know why? Because you, know you know the statement you made? This is the this essence, is of, the tawheed. essence of Tawheed. Because what you've because what you found in a nutshell is a follow. You've said, you've said I, have I have these tendencies towards opposite, towards opposite gender. I have options. I, have I, can, options. Say, I can say, like Allah made me like, like this, it's Allah's fault and I've been religion. You didn't go down, down that road. You said, look, I have these tendencies and I'm going to try to battle them. And I'm going to accept the Qadr of Allah. This is Tawheed. You accept the Qadr of Allah. You accept that good and bad come from Allah. You are, if you think about it, even though you have this test that you have with, many people can rebel. Yeah. Many people can say, you know, I don't even have an Somebody who is, Somebody who is obsessed with sleeping around has an hour. You did it. And the reason why I gave you a hug, actually, is because I found that so profound and strong coming from someone like you. Because I'm speaking to a lot of people who have these tendencies. Yeah, I struggle to find people who are in my situation who went this way. Exactly. So it was very unique and it's very interesting because you know why? When it comes to the issue of tawakkul, which is trust, you are having trust in Allah to a matter that you cannot control yourself. And you're saying, oh Allah, you're testing me with this. You're Make me strong. Him. You're worshipping him. You're acknowledging he exists there, and you are asking him for help. And like you said before, you said you found happiness 
why are I think I think, I think, people, I, think people, I think people I think people I think people what they do in the beginning is that I think they start to they start to compare their desires with Allah as two equal concepts and that's the that's the mistake there because if you do that you're basically you're basically just trying to find a way between the two where you can do that and also believe in Allah but you're not just doing but you're not just doing it to kind of just for the sake of doing it but you're trying to justify it within the parameters of Islam so that obviously cannot work but I what I what I suggest for people in my what I would suggest for people in my situation to do for example is to to explore, to the explore the situation with the acknowledgement that Allah is, is indeed, indeed the one. He is the one above us. He is the, the, one, the one you read about in the Quran. He is the one who has like, that ownership, ownership towards us. Yeah. Towards us. So, when you have that so when you have that approach, when you get when you get like, when you get like, deep into this situation, you you basically you basic you just need to try to give. You know what You know what it is. I think media makes it very difficult. For example, for people to I feel like media makes it extremely difficult for people to find. A way to reconcile this with Islam. Yes. But I feel like the, only, feel like solution the only solution to that, that which is not even that complex, is to just, is to you, just know, you know, try giving it up for Allah. Giving it up for Allah. I think if you, if you, I think if you, if you just try it, you will find more pleasure that way. Unless it's only in my remembrance, only in my remembrance do hearts find peace. So what that means is sometimes, so what that means is sometimes we think pleasure, and things, and that we want, things that we want, is we find in materialism. So when look, I was, I was not Muslim. Party girls, all this kind of stuff. I live this life that say you hit a wall. You hit a wall of what's next. I was I was to myself a couple of months ago, I was thinking I'm 32. Some people say I look 25. Yeah. Yeah. So, the thing is, yeah. so the thing the, is, yeah. the point is, this, the, I was thinking, point is this, can you imagine, can you imagine we live in that lifestyle, till this age, till this what, a age boring what a boring lifestyle. Going clubbing every weekend, Going clubbing every weekend. Going clubbing every weekend. Linking, up linking up with girls, it's boring, bro. It's boring, bro. It comes to a point where you're just bored. So the thing is, how do you actually find actual happiness and peace? This is where we believe in the fitra. God Almighty has programmed us that we can only find happiness in His remembrance. Just the way in when we enter gender, the, the biggest, the, the biggest, biggest pleasure is going to be in what? Think, you know, some of us think, you know, we're going to get, get, we're gonna get 72 virgins, that, you know, we're going to get all the girls. If you think about it, if you think about it we are told that we are the, that we greatest, are the greatest, greatest thing that we're going to look forward, forward, forward to is Allah's face. And his face, and the way he his majesty, not the way we think about it. So even in gender, we seek his face, and in this dunya, we seek him. So actually, pleasure doesn't come with, okay, I have these homosexual tendencies. If I can't practice them, I can't get the pleasure I want. No, because Allah says, if you fear me, I will give you a way up of peace yeah. you can never so, imagine. Yeah. So that inner peace, bro, sometimes when you have the inner peace and the connection, and the connection with God Almighty, there is nothing, there is nothing in this world that can match that. Nothing. 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 So that's why it's important when you said that about God Almighty and the connection and finding that. To me, that is beautiful, man. I'm so happy that I'm here today. Other than that, other than that, I feel like in the Quran it's quite clear, you know. I feel like for people who try to find a way with it, I feel like there's not really a way for you to reconcile these two things in a sense that you can justify this. Because in the Quran, it's literally quite clear. Even, even if you like literally translate the Arabic, it's quite clear what it's, it's, quite saying, clear about what it's saying about such people and you know such inclinations. I'll, 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 sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry. Because no, no, okay, no, okay, I want to say the identity, but sometimes they record it without it. No, 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 it's okay. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is that you know some people. What I was saying. So, so I'm so sorry. So you were saying uh, we're talking about the love of God. Oh, it's quite clear in the Quran, you know, that so for people to, you know, come to the conclusion that actually it's fine and, you know, Allah will still love you, will still forgive you, even if you, like, justify it in Islam parameters, really. So I feel like it's just impossible to do that. I feel like people need to first acknowledge that if you have a look in the Quran, really, I'm studying the Quran in the Numan Ali Khan. Oh, wow, brilliant. He is a gem. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like if you truly have a look at it you yeah. start to you realize, start that, to realize there's that, no, that there's no like you know even when, like, you know, even when the we, Quran even when the, Quran, even when the hypocrites are mentioned for example yeah. and how you know, and how, you know it, they, there's they, an ayah that says they come into the light and step out, out, out of their own convenience basically, basically yeah. that they accept Islam where only when it's convenient for them to do so and then they step outside of it when they just want to do something that doesn't adhere with Quran that's what Allah said have you seen the one who takes his own God so I feel like if you I feel like the solution the main solution here would be to put yourself outside of the box, of the box and, look yeah, and look at your situation technically without, yeah. without involving your emotions. So I understand that it's a very emotional. emotional. It's coming from someone who, is, who has lived this situation. Okay? So I understand the emotion can be quite yeah. strong. But if you look at it from, like, like, an external external perspective, perspective, right? an external perspective, right? If you put your, inclinations, you put your inclinations on one side, on one side and what reality is telling you, you know? 
you have realized that you have realized that subjective truth. truth. You have realized it, and you are reading the guidelines that the subjective truth has given to you. And if those guidelines are not adhering with your desires, it simply means that you have to give them up, just like anybody else has to give up other things. You know, it's the same exactly. I don't think I don't think homosexuality can be. I don't think I don't think Allah is being unfair by giving me a challenge, which makes me in my sexual inclinations it makes me unequal to someone who might be straight and is happily living a married life. I take it as a challenge. You know, I just take it as something that I have to live through and just like other people have and I feel like when Allah gives you such a struggle in your life it's simply because you can handle it it's not like it's not like it's not like you can't do it and when you have this mindset you never fall into it if you keep persisting and being consistent with this mindset nothing happens we don't we don't believe in the supernatural we believe Allah is there as an aid as a supporter you know and he does say that he will never give you something that you cannot bear and the thing is and I've seen that because the further I got away from that kind of environment with these things were being justified, the easier it got for me to deal with it. The easier it got. And I feel like it's going to be that, inshallah, you will be for that for life. Like, I don't know. And what I mean is also that, what you say? Um, I feel like I might have some advantages as well. Like, while other people might have to, you know, get married. While for me it's a bit, for me it's a bit, like, inconvenient to get married because I see people now. Do you know what I mean? It's like, so, uh, so uh, what I was saying is that I, I can see an advantage in my situation actually. I can see more time, I can see more time to spend with a lie in comparison to what you know married couples have. That's so beautiful, man. Why, man? That's amazing. I like, I like, I like the way you think, bro. I like the way you break it down. Where you're like, okay, I see the advantage. You don't look at the cup half empty. Look at it half full. And you're like, you know, maybe somebody who gets married will not have as much ibadah or closeness with God. I get to get that. That's bloody beautiful, man. That's why I'm, well, I'm amazed. Amazed. Amazed by how you. How you, that how you take that and test you and you don't turn it into, turn it into something, where you, something where you can blame God, you know, which, logically, you know, logically, but logically, logically, but logically, logically yeah, yeah. Yeah, and someone but can. You but if you think about having trust in Allah, etc., you're taking this test, you just beautifying it with ibadah, getting close to Allah, tawakkul, you know, tawheed, and all these things that you're saying. And I think it's amazing. And I think that this is one of the most amazing discussions of people that I've met. And I really appreciate it. I have to say. What do you think? First of all, it was very interesting to listen to for someone who's in his position saying, I accept this as a challenge. Not yeah. many people come out and actually admit such a thing. In fact, this is the first person that I'm hearing say, I'm like this, but, but I, I don't even know because I don't think Islam is welcoming to such things. And... So what does he do to practice exactly what Allah wants? Because he's still identifying himself as gay. Is it that every time he gets that urge maybe to do something gay, he walks away from that? Um, some of these people, they're, they're, um, I mean, it's just their lifestyle, but it doesn't mean that they, they go into intercourse with fellow men you know but i don't know uh, it can't be a lifestyle because i think uh you're done yeah. i'm just thinking i'm just wondering because the conflict that yeah that this guy has you follow a really you follow and believe in a religion that doesn't accept your lifestyle yeah. as you're calling it so what do you choose but mm. i love the fact that he still thinks religion or Islam is above what he may identify I think as. it's Islam, but you know, sometimes you have challenges and he's calling it a challenge. Yeah, he has he accepted is. it that yeah, this yeah, is a challenge for me. And it doesn't mean that we should just denounce him. Let's try and teach him his ways of coming out of, out of it. But will the community accept him? Of course they will not accept him because the Quran is um, clear. It's clear that they don't accept such. So. The only way is just to try and educate, not even educate, just try to... Um, Maybe speak to people that can help? Yes. Like speak. the way they're having a conversation, I yeah. feel like he feels welcome, that's why he spoke yeah. and said all these things. You know, what do you think? I think it's a very good conversation, but the uh, what I've noticed is that, um, you know, when, when you're in such a position of this other guy, uh, the guy with the glasses, um, Try as much as possible to see somebody um, eye to eye, you understand, when you're having this kind of conversation. 
It's a sensitive conversation. Let someone see your eyes so they can be able to sometimes you, you can you what can, do you mean? The way you take off his glasses, yeah. that would be eye to eye. Yeah. Oh, okay. Take off your glasses, just be be more um, I don't want to say presentable, just be mm. more um it's more like being intimate. Yes. Like being yeah, being more intimate because more the thing connected is, to the person. Imagine you're getting into a room where you're doing therapy and then your your therapist is your therapist is right there having glasses looking at you. I mean, what are you gonna get from him or her or something? You get it? Fine. Beautiful words coming out of the mouth, but you need to connect the eye so that you you understand how meaningful that is you know well, that's actually a good trait though even when you go for an interview they yeah don't keep you know icon. so i feel like first thing i've noticed uh just pull out your 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 your, eye, your, your shades off if you're talking to uh a, a gentleman who, who who is going through this kind of um uh probably belief or lifestyle or whatnot you know so that she can be able to convince even him that you know there's greater his greater, heart is in the right yes, place. yes. I mean, yeah. There's a greater place other than what you're going through now. What I've noticed is that it's a very good conversation, really mature. And the uh, the supposed guy who's gay, it um, is really articulate enough, and is accepting that you know what well, this is a challenge for me, and that I need to come out of this. You know, I think he's even willing to actually be able to to meet people who can help him out. You can tell that you see and another thing i i like this other guy because the guy is really welcoming and not trying to bash him out like you're gay you know call him out. yeah you know the quran says this you're supposed to be gay people not even supposed to you know all these kind of things you get it he's really welcoming and trying to and what i like is that he was listening to him you know trying to understand where he's coming from how did it how did this all start where did you live with? and and the guy is actually explaining it in a way that you know um um like the 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 what is going through it might be just a phase or a stage do you understand because look i was reading uh in my country the uh, these gay women they call them lesbians yeah one of them came out and said it's done with this kind of lifestyle and whatnot so uh, technically you 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 will look at this kind of situation whereby this is just a, a phase or a stage that people go through sometimes you get to a stage where you feel like no let me try out this maybe this is gonna put me at peace but again you realize that no this is not the right way so you're in a state of imbalance and then you find yourself going back to the the um the, the original the, soul yeah not uh, the original reset soul. i mean going back to the to the factory reset so now i think this is a stage that is going through sometimes when i look at such people or this kind of people i'm not trying to be so judgmental you know i believe that they have choices of doing whatever they want until when probably they get to a point they learn like hey you know this is not the this way. is not the way you understand so i'm not saying it's acceptable to be that but I'm saying that let's not try to put them at a corner where we don't even want to talk to them. I think that is so inhuman, you know, or to a point where we don't want to engage with them one-on-one -on -one, or we don't want to have a conversation with them. Some of these people are the smartest people we've ever seen out there. But I condone such act of the elites or maybe the people who are controlling the media who are right there, straight on, on our small kids or small children trying to bring this kind of agenda to them. Yes, that's what I don't know. I mean, the thing is, let children be children, let children grow, understanding uh, what they are and who they are, not trying to create that kind of imbalance but that's with children. You know? Like he said, sorry to disturb you. Like he said, this was a mature conversation. Someone mm -hmm. else would have come here and started preaching, this is my life, I'll do what yeah. I want, I'll still... Do you understand? Yeah, No of one here is, is forcing the other person to believe anything. Yeah. 
they were both open to there are other people like him they will come here with this all rights movement and all those kind of things like it's my right to be like this it's my right to do we want our own we want this we want that we want our own sports what you know all these kind of things i mean listen once you start coming out like that then you're actually telling us this is clearly an agenda do you understand to actually um create uh, a society where it's so imbalanced to a point where men are being reduced to uh to to, to uh, what do you call this um to have less masculinity or something i don't know um to conclude i was just going to say we all believe in different things what i believe in i shouldn't force my friends to believe in or the next person to them so if that's your lifestyle do it away from me especially if you know i'm not about that life yeah don't enforce your life to somebody else yeah we should learn to like respect someone and yeah anything else no nothing uh, if there's anything you want us to react to let us know down below by giving us a name or a link make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and we'll see you in our next reaction video and deuces